This lecture introduces linear independence of vectors in a vector space. Well, if you have a set of vectors, let's say v1, v2 to vn, and you're wondering if the set of vectors are linearly independent from each other or not, then that's the questions about a linearly independencies of a set of vectors, right? So we define a set of vectors in a vector space are said to be linearly independent if you consider this equation c1 v1 plus c2 v2 plus c n v n equals to zero. If this equation implies that all the scalars c1 c2 to c n must equal to zero, then this set of vector v1, v2 to vn are linearly independent. Again, if you consider this equation and all the scalars c1 to cn have to be zero, then v1 to v2 to vn are linearly independent. Otherwise, v2, v2, v1, v2 to vn are linearly dependent. Well, then how can we, and, how can we determine whether a set of vectors is linearly independent using these definitions? Well, from these definitions, we will notice that this equation is the same as C1 and then V1, right? Plus C2 times V2 plus Cn times Vn equals to zero. And then if you transform this linear combinations it will be the same as v1, v2 to vn in a matrix form. And then c1, c2 to cn. And then this is going to be 0. So what does it mean? That means you uh, form a matrix using V1, V2 to Vn. This is a, I call it matrix A. And then I multiply to a constant, right? To a um, column vector C. And then I get a vector zero. So this is again, is a homogeneous system where C is the variable vector. A is a matrix, C is a variable vector, and zero is just a constant vector on the other side. So if you put this into a put if you put the v1, v2 to van in, into a matrix, c into a vector, and zero into the vector to get a homogeneous homogeneous systems. And if if you found that c equals to zero is the only solutions, then you can conclude that v1, v2 to vn are linearly independent. All right. Let's look at a specific example here. You have V1 and V2 in R2, these two vectors in R2, and you wanna put these two vectors here into an augmented matrix, zero, zero, to a homogeneous system, right? And then you solve for it, let's say R2, R2 minus two, R1, one, three, 2 minus 2, 0, 5 minus 6 is negative 1, 0, 0. And at this point, you know that x2 equals to 0, negative x2 equals to 0, so x2 equals to 0. x1 plus 3 x2 equals to 0. That means x1 has to be equals to 0. So the solutions x equals to 0 is the only solutions for this system. If so, 
we can say that unique. If zero is a unique solution, then we can say that V1 and V2 are linearly independent. All right, that's how you determine a set of vectors linearly independent or not. Well, let's look at another example. Uh, look at the three vectors in R3. Again, you want to form this matrices, these vectors into a matrix, and you want to look at the homogeneous system. And again, you just need to solve for it to see if you have zero at the unit as a unique solution. So let's say R2, R2 minus R1, R3, R3 minus 3, R1. You have 1, 0, 2. 1 minus 1 is 0, 2 is 2. 4 minus 2 is 2. And you have 0 on the other side. 3 minus 3 is 0. 1 minus 0 is 1. 7 minus 6 is 1. OK. And then next one. I would have R2, R3, R3 minus 1 half R2. Because I want this to be 0. So I want to 0 out of this entry. I would have 0, 2, 2, 0, 1 minus 1 is 0, 1 minus 1 is 0, and 0 on the other side. Okay, well at this point, again, I don't need to solve for it. I just want to know whether zero is the unique solution, is the only solutions. And at this point, I would make some observations. So this is a pivot. This is a pivot. And I only have two pivots. That means this is a free variable, right? And this is a free variable, and it's a homogeneous system then you know that we have infinite many solutions. Well, if I said this is the system A, right? AX equals to zero here. Since AX equals to zero, where A is this matrix has many solutions. The V1, the set of V1, V2, V3, the three vectors V1, V2, V3 are not linearly independent. Again, if you want to show if V1, V2, and V3 are linearly independent, then zero has to be the only solution. But since this system has many solutions, based on this reduced echelon form, I conclude that um, these three vectors are not linearly independent. So that means they linearly dependent. Okay. Well, the geometric interpretations of linear independence is if you uh, look at a vectors, a set of vectors in R2, right? then um, say this is V1 and this is V2. So V1 and V2, if they are linearly independent, if they cross at each other at one point, okay, they're not parallel or they're not on the top of each other. If they cross at each other at one point, that means V1 and V2 are linearly independent. So V1 and V2 are linearly independent, okay? But if you have a situation where, say, I have V1, 
and I have V2 is parallel to V1. Or I have V2 is just a scalar of V1. That means V1 and V2 are linearly dependent. Okay, this is how you visualize linearly independent and linearly dependent vectors in R2. Well, in R3, then you will have, if the three vectors are linearly independent in R3, then the three vectors, again, is going to cross at each other at only one point. V1, V2, and V3. If one of them is parallel to another or on the top of each other, then they will be linearly dependent. In this case, I can say V1, V2, and V3 are linearly independent. Well, let's look at the next example. So this, this example is a proof problem where you can, um, well, I want to show you how to use the idea of linearly independent vectors to show that if you, if you show some, some fact that you can use, right? So then in this case, if the three vectors x, 1, x2, x3 are linearly independent in Rn, and you let y1 is a linear combination of x1, x2, y2 is a linear combination of x2, x3, and y3 is a linear combination of x1, x3. Then the question is, are these three vectors, y1, y2, y3, linearly independent? You're going to prove your answer. So let's say I want to show, so if, if, if I want to show that y1, y2, and y3 are linearly independent, I have to consider using the definitions. I want to consider this linear combinations. This equation, right, where c1, c2, and C3 are just scalar in R. Okay. Well, they're just scalar, they're just real values. So I want to consider these equations, and if I can show that C1, C2, and C3 are uh, all equals to zero and is the only solution to this equation, then I show that C1, C2, C3 are linear independent. So what I have in mind is if C1 equals C2, C3 equals to zero um, is the only solutions, then y1, y2, and y3 are linearly independent. Okay, so this is my thought. Otherwise, they are linearly dependent. All right, let's try it. So consider these equations. So from these equations, I will replace y1 by x1 plus x2. C1, X1 plus X2. Replace Y2 by X2 plus X3. Plus C3, X3 plus X1. The reason why I'm pre replacing Y1, Y2, Y3 because I don't know anything about Y1, Y2, Y3 besides the relation between Y and X. And also I know that these three vectors, the three X vectors here are linear independent. So maybe I can use, I can use some of the properties of those vectors. Okay. So then, um, well, now I can distribute 
x1, x2, c1, c2, c3 into these vectors, c1, x1 plus c1, x2 plus c2, x2 plus c2, x3 plus c3, x3 plus c3, x1 equals to zero. So what I can do now next is I can say, oh, I have x1, x1. I can combine them. So I have x1, c1 plus c3 times x1, right? x2, x2, I have c1 plus c2 times x2. I have x3, x3, I have c2 plus c3 times x3 equals to zero. So why do I want to group x1, x2, and x3? Because, because I know that x1, x2, and x3 are linearly independent since linearly independent, then we know that the, co the coefficients of x1, x2, and x3 are all equal to zero. Then c1 plus c3 equals to zero. c1 plus c2 equals to zero. c2 plus c3 equals to zero. Okay. Now we have a system of three equation, but with two um, ver uh, with three variables, we can solve as a system. And when you solve the system, you can either put in in the matrix one, zero, one, 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 zero, zero, one, one, right? Put zero, zero, zero. And when you solve for this system, you will know that zero is the only solutions for the system. You will get two. Well, you reduce this matrix you get to this. I will leave the steps reducing this matrix for you to practice. You get zero. What does it mean? That means C1 equal to C2 equal to C3 equals to zero. This is, again, if I show that C1 equals to C2 equals to C3 equal to zero, that is when I show that y1, y2, y3 are linear independent. I just show that y1, y2, and y3 are linear independent because I just show that c1 equals to c2 equals to c3 equals to zero. And this is the proof, an example of proof problem. Using your understanding of linear independence to show something given some conditions, some existing conditions.